One of the key goals that we have for our students in our transdisciplinary STEM program is to develop their creative confidence. The idea of creativity brings a lot of fear to students and even teachers. Many of our students think that original, innovative ideas come strictly from their imagination and their own minds. And that creativity is based on a trait that some people have and some people don't have. I'm hoping that our program will eradicate this notion and show them that they are all naturally creative people. The goal of this video is to make some suggestions on how we can help our students gain creative confidence. Throughout the video, I will be referencing two books. The first one is called Steal Like an Artist, 10 Things Nobody Told You About Being Creative by Austin Kleon. The second one is called Creative Confidence, written by two brothers, David Kelly and Tom Kelly. Both of these books promote the idea that we are all naturally creative and provide some principles and strategies to help develop creativity. We first need to help our students realize that nothing is original, that innovation always comes from something else. I really like this quote from Steel Like an Artist. It says, Every new idea is just a mashup or a remix of one or more previous ideas. Austin Kleon recommends that we collect good ideas and build upon them. An example of this would be the iPad. In 2010, this new innovative device was introduced, a device that many people had never seen before. However, it was not the original tablet computer. Here's a picture of a Microsoft tablet computer that was introduced prior to the iPad. There were many of these devices that came before the iPad. But this does not mean that the iPad was not innovative. Apple used past devices and built upon them to create the iPad. The iPad was a remix of previous ideas. According to the Kelly brothers in the Creative Confidence book, the creativity myth is the belief that creativity is a fixed trait, like having brown eyes. I have to admit that I believed in this myth and found a lot of people throughout my life who believed it too. I remember many of my classmates in art class acted like they were uninterested or afraid to try anything because they didn't think they had the creative trait. Believing this already set them up for failure. What we want is the opposite. What we want is our students to have creative confidence. According to the book, creative confidence is the ability to come up with new ideas and have the courage to try them out. So how do we build our students' creative confidence? I have chosen five ideas from the Creative Confidence book that we can include in our STEM program. We need to correct students' mindsets, cultivate creative sparks, provide them with guided mastery, facilitate them in the design thinking process, and provide an innovative learning environment. First, we have to help students have the correct mindsets. The first mindset students need to have is the growth mindset. This is the belief that growth and learning is possible, that their current abilities are not set in stone. With energy and experience, you can expand on the knowledge and skills of any given topic. The next mindset is self-efficacy, a term created by Albert Bandura, a psychologist who helped people get over different phobias. Self-efficacy is the conviction that people have that makes them believe that they can change a situation and accomplish their goals that they sought out to do. According to Bandura's research, people who have self-efficacy try more difficult challenges, show longer perseverance, and are more resilient when encountered with failures or obstacles. Students also need a creative mindset, which looks beyond what is expected, applies their imagination, and has a drive to make an idea better. This mindset believes that their new, better ideas make their world better as well. It has an optimistic view of what is possible when finding solutions to problems. As educators, we need to cultivate our students' creative sparks. To do this, we can teach our students the following strategies. The first thing is that we need to help our students choose to be creative. Second, we have to have them think like a traveler. When we travel, we notice a lot of detail and say things like, isn't that interesting? This attitude will help our students find new insights in the world around them and generate lots of new ideas. Another strategy is to ask questions that start with why. Asking deep probing questions will help students find insights that sparks creativity. 
Now, how can we help students break the belief that only people with the creative trait generate innovative ideas? How do we help students gain the courage to try out their new ideas? Albert Bendora was able to help people with phobias through something called guided mastery. He was able to break their false beliefs of their situation and gave them the courage to change other aspects of their lives. Guided mastery involves three psychology tools. Vicarious learning is learning through observation. So in education, vicarious learning would involve the teacher or even a peer modeling a skill while the student observes the behavior to replicate the behavior later on. The next tool is social persuasion. This involves people being persuaded that they will succeed if they have the right skills to accomplish a goal. In the education world, this would be encouragement from the teacher that helps students gain confidence and motivate them to improve their skills and expand their knowledge. Lastly, graduated tasks are small manageable challenges that gradually increase in difficulty. Teachers create units with learning activities that do exactly that. These activities help improve students' skills and knowledge to help them accomplish learning goals. We could provide our students with graduated tasks to build creative confidence and ultimately lead them to have courage to act upon their ideas and solve complex problems. Like riding a bike, it takes practice and coaching. So think of creativity as a muscle. Students need to work out their creativity muscle. Like I said earlier, creative confidence involves the ability to come up with new ideas and solutions to problems. One approach students can use for creativity and innovation is through the design thinking process. It is a methodology that involves solution-based thinking with a huge emphasis on human-centered design. Students can use the needs, desires, and motivations of people to find solutions to the culminating challenges. The process involves five stages, empathize, define, ideate, prototype, and test. If you would like to experience the design thinking process, look in the description below for the link to a crash course on design thinking. Brianna, our sole campus's STEM coordinator, synthesized the design thinking process into three stages, think, make, and improve. This is a great tool for elementary students to use when designing solutions to their culminating challenges. The link to this diagram is in the description below. Finally, we need to provide our students with a learning environment that is ideal for creativity and innovation. There are four ideas from the Creative Confidence book that I believe should be implemented in our STEM program. First is the implementation of the project-based learning approach. The D School, which is the Institute of Design at Stanford University, according to its website, prides itself as a hub for innovators. The way they teach their students about design and innovation is through project-based learning that involves real-world challenges. The second idea is karaoke confidence. Basically, it's the idea that people sing at karaoke bars because of four guidelines. Keep sense of humor. Build on the energy of others. Minimize hierarchy. Value team camaraderie and trust. And defer judgment. Applying these guidelines would encourage students to generate and share their ideas without fear of judgment from teachers and peers. They will also be encouraged to create innovative solutions to challenges without the fear of failure. The third idea is the innovation greenhouse. This concept pertains to the physical space of the learning environment that reinforces the culture of innovation. Our collab spaces, as well as our homeroom classes, need to be organized and arranged with intention to optimize workspace for creativity and innovation. Create a list of improvements and continue to prototype the space. The fourth and final learning environment factor is language. Language has the ability to shape the culture of your classroom. Quoting the Creative Confidence book, negative or defeatist attitudes spawn negative or defeatist words. This can be hazardous to innovation. Use alternative words like, how might we, instead of, we've tried that already, or that will never work. Using more optimistic language will decrease the fear of judgment and the fear of failure. For links to this presentation and more resources on the topic of creativity, look in the description below.